Hi friends, remember in an earlier video on electricity, we saw this simple circuit with a single bulb. As you can see, when the switch is in the on position, the bulb glows. The bulb is called a resistance or a resistor since it opposes the flow of current in the circuit. Now let's say we want to add another bulb in the circuit. So we have two bulbs. How can we connect the two bulbs? What will be the combined resistance of these two bulbs? That's exactly what we are going to discuss in this video. Combination of resistances. We we'll look at the two ways resistances can be combined. Series and parallel. I'm going to make the concepts really easy for you. First, let's revise the concept of resistance. A resistance or resistor is something that opposes the flow of electric current. An example of a resistance or resistor is a bulb or a nichrome filament used in a toaster. You may have seen small resistors in your school lab. They look something like this. According to Ohm's law, resistance is defined as the ratio of potential difference divided by the current. The unit of resistance is Ohm and symbol is Omega. In this circuit, the cells supply the electric potential or what is known as voltage. Here is the switch and the resistance is the bulb. Actually, the connecting copper wires also have a resistance. What do you think is the resistance of the copper wires? Is the resistance low, medium or high? That's right. Copper is a very good conductor of electricity. So the resistance of the copper wires is very low. Since the resistance of the wires is negligible, we will approximate the resistance to be zero. So the only resistance in this circuit is the bulb. Now let's say I take another bulb and I want to add it to this circuit. How can I connect the second bulb? There are two ways to connect it in series or in parallel. We'll first connect it in series and then in parallel and compare the two types of connections. Let's go ahead and start with the series combination. Since there is less space, I have removed the switch. I have connected these two bulbs in series. As you can see, the two bulbs are connected end to end, just like the coaches in a train. This is a series combination. Did you notice the change in brightness of the bulbs? In a series combination, the bulbs are less bright. They glow dimly. These small bulbs are glowing so dimly, it's hard to notice their glow. Now, why are the bulbs less bright? First, let's analyze the series circuit and then we'll come back to this question. If we draw the circuit diagram for this series combination, it will look something like this. Each bulb is represented using the resistance symbol. In this series combination, let's look at the potential difference across each resistance and the current flowing through each resistance. Since the two resistors are connected end to end, the same current flows through each resistor. If you imagine current is flowing water, the same current will flow through each resistor and it is equal to I, the main current in the circuit. So in a series combination, the current in the resistances is the same. Now what about the potential difference across each resistance? If the potential difference supplied by the battery is V volts, does each resistance get the full potential difference V volts? Let's take a closer look. The battery supplies a potential difference of V volts. So we can consider the electric potential of the positive terminal of the battery to be V volts and the negative terminal to be zero volts. This point which is connected to the positive terminal is at V volts and this point which is connected to the negative terminal is at zero volts. So the potential difference across the entire series combination is V minus zero which is equal to V volts. Now let's take a look at the potential difference across each resistance. 
that is if we put a voltmeter across each resistance, what will the reading in the voltmeter be? Let V1 be the potential difference across resistor R1. Using Ohm's law, V1 equals I1 R1. Since the current I1 in R1 is equal to I, the main current, we get V1 equal to I R1. Similarly, the potential difference across R2 will be V2 equals I R2. As you can see, the potential difference V1 and V2 across the two resistors will be different. They will only be same for the special case where the two resistors are equal. The voltage V of the battery gets divided between the two resistances. It gets split. So V equals V1 plus V2. As we saw, in a series combination, the current in the resistances is the same and it is equal to the main current. But the potential difference is different. And the potential difference of the battery V is the sum of the potential differences V1 plus V2. So the potential difference of the battery gets split between the resistances. Now let's take a look what will be the combined resistance of this series circuit. Let's start with the voltage equation V equal to V1 plus V2. Using Ohm's law, we can write V1 equal to I1 R1 and V2 equal to I2 R2. Since the current in the series circuit is same and it is equal to I, the main current, we get V1 equal to I R1 and V2 equal to I R2. If we apply Ohm's law on the entire circuit, we can write V equal to I R S, where R S is the combined or equivalent series resistance. It is also called resultant resistance. So our equation now becomes I R S equal to I R1 plus I R2. The current I gets cancelled and we get R S equal to R1 plus R2. The series resistance is the sum of the individual resistances. Let's say R1 equals 2 ohms and R2 equals 3 ohms. Then the equivalent resistance RS is going to be 2 plus 3 equal to 5 ohms. Equivalent resistance means that if you want to replace these two resistances in series with a single resistance, then what should be the value of the resistance? That's right. 5 ohms. We can extend the series resistance formula to 3 or more resistances. For example, for 3 resistances in series, the combined series resistance Rs will be equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. In a series combination, the equivalent resistance is always greater than the maximum resistance since it's a sum of the individual resistances. Now you can guess why the bulbs glow dimly in a series combination. Because in a series combination, the overall resistance increases. So the current in the circuit decreases. Each bulb gets this smaller current and so the bulbs glow dimly. Now let's take a look at the parallel combination. In the parallel combination, I've connected the two bulbs like this. As you can see, the ends of the two bulbs are connected to this point and the other ends are connected to this point. Now the bulbs glow brighter. Why do bulbs glow brighter in a parallel combination but less bright in a series combination? What do you think? First, let's analyze the parallel circuit and then we'll come back to this question. If we draw the circuit diagram, for this parallel combination, it will look something like this. Each bulb is represented using the resistance symbol. In this parallel combination, let's look at the potential difference across each resistance and the current flowing through each resistance here. Let's say the voltage or the potential difference supplied by the battery is V volts. 
So we can take the potential at the positive terminal of the battery to be V volts and the negative terminal is at 0 volts. Now the wire is a good conductor and it has negligible resistance. So there is no potential drop across the wire. So this point which is connected through the wire to the positive terminal is also at V volts. And similarly this point which is connected using this wire to the negative terminal is at 0 volts. So what is the potential difference across each bulb? That's right, V minus 0 which is equal to V volts. In a parallel circuit, the potential difference across each resistance is the same. So if you put a voltmeter across each resistor, the reading will be same. Now let's take a look at the current flowing in each resistance. Let's say the main current is I. I splits into two parts, I1 and I2. The current in each branch is different. So if you put an ammeter to measure the main current I and an ammeter in each branch, you will observe that the main current I equals I1 plus I2. This is expected since the main current splits into two parts. I1 and I2. As we saw, in a parallel circuit, the potential difference across the resistances is the same, but the current splits. In a series circuit, it is the opposite. The current in the resistances is the same, but the potential difference gets split between the resistances. Now let's look at the formula for the parallel combination. To derive the formula, let's use the current equation. The main current I splits into two parts. So I equal to I1 plus I2. Using Ohm's law for resistor R1, we can write I1 equal to voltage V1 by R1. Similarly, I2 is V2 by R2. As we saw in the parallel circuit, the voltage V1 and V2 is equal to V the voltage of the battery. Again using Ohm's law, the main current I can be written as V by RP, where V is the voltage and RP is the total resistance of the parallel combination or what is called as the equivalent resistance. Now V gets cancelled on the left and right hand side and we get the formula 1 by RP equals 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2, where RP is the equivalent resistance of the parallel combination. And if you have three resistances, the formula for the equivalent resistance will be 1 by RP equals 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. The equivalent resistance means that if you want to replace all the resistances in parallel with one single resistance, RP. Then RP will be calculated using this formula. Let's take an example. If you have a parallel combination of two resistances, 2 ohm and 3 ohm, then what will be the equivalent resistance? That's right, it's going to be 1.2 ohms. How do we get that? So let's use the formula 1 by RP equals 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3. But to get RP, we need to take the reciprocal. So RP is equal to 6 by 5, which is equal to 1.2 ohms. One interesting thing about the equivalent parallel resistance is that the equivalent resistance is lesser than the least resistance. So even without calculating the equivalent resistance, we can say that for a parallel combination of 2 ohms and 3 ohms, the equivalent resistance will be less than 2 ohms. And as we saw, the resistance is less than 2 ohms. It's 1.2 ohms. Now coming back to our question, why do the bulbs glow brightly in a parallel combination as compared to a series combination? Let's say the potential difference of the battery is 6 volts. So the potential difference across each resistance is also 6 volts. 
the current in the 2 ohm resistance can be calculated using Ohm's law. I1 equals V by R1. Current I1 equals 6 by 2, which is equal to 3 ampere. Similarly, the current in the 3 ohm resistance is equal to 6 by 3, which is equal to 2 ampere. If the 2 ohm and 3 ohm resistances were connected separately to the potential difference of 6 volts, then the current in each resistance would be same as the parallel combination. 3 ampere in the 2 ohm resistance and 2 ampere in the 3 ohm resistance. So the current in each resistance is unaffected by the presence of other resistances. That's why the bulbs in a parallel combination glow as bright as if they were connected individually to the voltage source. Now let me ask you, how are the lights in your house connected? In series or parallel? That's right, they are connected in parallel so that all the lights get the full voltage and they can glow brightly. If you are in India, then the voltage at your home is 220 volts. So all the lights in a parallel combination get 220 volts and they can glow brightly. But if you connected the lights in series, then the voltage gets divided between the lights and the lights will receive less current and glow dimly. So usually all the electrical things in your house are connected in parallel. We have seen two ways resistances can be combined, series and parallel. Now let's summarize the differences. In a series combination, the current in the resistors is the same. But in a parallel combination, the main current splits and the current in the resistors is different. In a series combination, the potential difference splits across the resistors and the potential difference across each resistor is different. But in a parallel combination, the potential difference across all the resistors is the same. For series circuit, the combined resistance or the equivalent series resistance is calculated using the formula Rs equal to R1 plus R2. While in a parallel circuit, the equivalent parallel resistance is calculated using the formula 1 by Rp equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. For series, the equivalent series resistance is greater than the maximum resistance. But for the parallel circuit, the equivalent parallel resistance is lesser than the least resistance in the circuit. Let's pin the comparison of series and parallel combination of resistances on our concept board. I hope series and parallel combination of resistances is crystal clear to you now. And do remember to like, comment and share out this video and hit the subscribe button for my YouTube channel. You can check my Facebook page and do check out the full courses for physics, chemistry, biology, maths and computer coding on our website manuchaacademy.com. I'll put the links below. Hope you like it and happy learning.